Yeah, absolutely. I've got some really fond memories of being here as a player, which you know, seems like an awful long time ago now. But um, yeah, I think to, to come back in, in the, the role, that kind of overarching role at you know, the heart of the, the club, you know, feels a, a real privilege. And you know, it seems a long time ago that I was kind of making my way into the ground with uh, Martin Ball driving me in in his um, convertible Mazda with a town called Malice blaring out. So yeah, now it's, uh, everything seems a lot more responsible. Yeah, I, th I think that the breadth of the role and the ability to, to influence across the whole club was, was really exciting. Um, and, and actually, you know, from my perspective, the you know, talent pathway, the professional element to the club as well, and, and mixing the skills and experience that I built up over the last kind of 10, 12 years. So that was hugely exciting. But um, I think, you know, we've got a really talented squad here that thought we could you know, compete for the trophies and, and also just to improve that squad as well. So the balance of kind of the development of that squad and I think the ability we've got to compete and win, coupled with some you know some areas for, for growth across the club which I think I can really help influence. You know, it, it seemed a hugely exciting opportunity and a great match for my skills and experience. Yeah, I've had a few few people ask me, well, what does that actually role entail? And I think you know it's it's a really broad role. Uh, certainly, for everything from you know the, the first team, um, you know, cricket organisationally, and to talent pathway, cricket administration, and, and science and medicine, and, and making sure that you know we're really well planned uh, on all areas of our cricket is, is essentially, I guess, the, the the nuts and bolts of it. I think with Dale coming in as first team coach, 100%, uh, and fundamentally, it's, it's his role to prepare the first team to work with the captain to ensure we're winning games of cricket and though I'll have some input with Dale it's it's his baby there he'll, he'll be working with the first team captains in, in, to try and bring us success um, I think I look at the role really is looking after the, the, the medium to long term interests of the club and, and making sure that, that the planning and the organisation it is there to, to, to ensure across all our departments that they're not only well functioning but uh, looking to improve in all aspects so yeah I'll be having a um, uh, a keen eye oh, on the first team will be out there with the slinger and me and I'll certainly be influencing in a number of areas but kind of looking forward to, to leaving Dale to that one. Yeah, I mean in the interview process Dale came across as um, really calm, measured, you know, balanced but also with a huge knowledge of the game and, and a clear understanding of how to win not only matches but uh, you know over a course of a season how to kind of put results together and he can evidence that as a player and as a coach so he, he was very very strong in that regard and also a number of people in the game um, spoke brilliantly about him not only as a, a cricket man but also uh, as a person and how he kind of looks to, to work with people so I think certainly with myself coming in new as well and given Dale's rich and breadth history in county cricket you know his experience will be invaluable uh, in terms of for the, the players and coaching staff and, and i think he'll be able to develop you know a lot of people across the organization so yeah we're, we're hugely excited about him coming in and i think he'll he'll bring that um, steel that edge that knowledge um, and he's been there and, and done it before so there will undoubtedly there'll be times in the summer where we're under pressure and, and i'm sure he's going to bring a composed calm and knowledgeable head to our dressing room I think that there's been some some really exciting recruitment that has gone on or off the field, and I'm not including my, myself in that. But you know, the, the recruitment of, of Dale Benkenstein and Marcus Harris and, and Zaffa as you know overseas spinner coming back, um, and also some of the, the signings we've made of our own players to retain. But I, I think that the vibe and, and energy around the club, you know, seems significant. And, and haven't been at the club for a while, but you know how things are developed around the ground and just the, the general signage and the, the aspirational nature of where everyone seems to be at. It seems really encouraging from my perspective and I, and I certainly am assuming that's where the supporters are at as well, that they're seeing growth coming Gloucestershire's way and I guess with that becomes the expectation and, and I'd urge everyone to be patient with that, you know, it may be the fact that, you know, the, the first couple of games, you know, we're not going, going out and demolishing the opposition, but I think what we're, we're building is something that can be sustainable. Uh, and also we want to make sure that from a playing perspective, it is coherent. The guys are understanding how they're going to win matches for Gloucestershire and that we're equipped to deal with a multitude of scenarios, whether that be injuries, loss of form, conditions. We're actually becoming fairly equipped uh, as an organisation 
to be able to challenge on, on, on numerous fronts and I think that's maybe one of the reasons that the supporters are really excited that they can that see that building in the background. Yeah, you know, it's one of the things I find hugely exciting in terms of coming back to the club is we've got those, you know, those young players of Dom Goodman, Ollie Price, you know, Tom Price, um, Ben Childsworth, you know, young players of really high potential and, and have had a bit of a sniff in first team cricket. And then you've got that middle group of players who are highly experienced and um, who have also had a sniff of some, some bigger cricket, you know, James Bracey, your David Paynes, uh, your more experienced, you know, Chris Dent with our overseas recruitment, which I think has been really strong and you know and I think across the board we've got that balance of aspirational and exciting young players who've got plenty of growth we've got our kind of guys who are in the middle of their careers and actually it's it's then up to them well, what do they want to make of their careers now how are they going to influence matches and and how are the coaches and ourselves going to inspire them and develop them to be more effective players for Gloucestershire and beyond and then you've got your kind of creme de la creme of your your overseas players you know that the, the real kind of um, cherry on top of, of guys you're bringing in and to provide real influence in matches and I think that kind of marriage between those three aspects of the club is, is really exciting. Yeah, I think given all the, the, the chat around expectation and how we're looking to, to win things, I think certainly you know it, it's it, the easy one to say is, is winning something but I think it, it's much deeper than that. For, from my perspective I want to see that continual improvement I want to see that the optimism that's here pre-season um, and around the ground, that actually then goes on to the field, that our players are developing, they are improving, our departments and our processes are around the, the ground and um, with our kind of talent pathway, professional teams, that's evolving and developing as well and that our players are going out to the field and they're able to stand up under pressure and produce match influence in performances when it counts. I think at times we have to understand that the opposition can play well and there may be certain circumstances which are beyond our control. So if we're evidencing a continual improvement and we're competing uh, in all areas, in all formats, you know, for me that represents success. I think it's very easy to, to say that silverware represents success. Well, the, it may be the fact actually that the opposition haven't played well either in certain areas and I want to build something really big here, you know, really kind of massive over the next kind of five to seven years, which, which represents sus sustainable improvement and success rather than a one-hit wonder this year. So certainly those incremental areas uh, are a big thing for me, but um, yeah, I can assure everybody uh, at home that we'll be doing our, our, our very best to ensure that we'll win trophies too. Yeah, I think I, I remember watching Kevin Peterson here, I think in 2005, actually take Jason Gillespie down and actually spent her winter, I think, in the market department that, um, that year helping in terms of that international kind of get ready and I remember it was, it was a huge undertaking to get that on with everything that was needed at the ground everything was kind of brought and rented in etc to come back now to the ground it's just such an amazing venue it's, it's ready to, to host massive matches and I think just from a, an infrastructure I mean, Gloucestershire Cricket have got to take a, a lot of credit in terms of how they've got the facility not just ready for international cricket but welcoming for spectators and, and home and away players uh, to come here and I think you know, some of the, the Wall of Legends, I think, which is over on the, the far side where the, the Jessup stand is or, or used to be. You know, it looks absolutely fantastic and, and a real credit to the tradition, but also the, the modernisation of, of the ground. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's undertaken a huge, um, I guess, refurbishment, but still kept the kind of unique characteristics which make Bristol a unique and difficult place to come and play for people.